Hey, we're doing some real fishing today in the state of Vermont on Lake Champlain. I'm with some biologists here, and we're kind of cheating. We got the electro shocking boat out, doing a little research. Hey, glad you could join me. We got some great bass fishing on Lake Champlain. Coming up. Lake Champlain is known as one of the best lakes in the U.S. for consistent catches of big bass. And on today's show, we'll show you what we're talking about. Sean Good, a fisheries biologist with Vermont Fish and Wildlife, takes Bob for two days of cranking for early season bass along the Vermont side of Lake Champlain. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> then they finish the trip off electroshocking to see what all they missed. Oh, both then. Here comes. Whoa. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Look at that big laser. Yeah. Ah, cute. Oh, baby. That thing is a monster. <laughs> the Real Fishing Show with Bob Izumi. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh, I got one. <laughs> Look at that thing. Ow! <laughs> Look at those teeth! Oh, there we go. Come <laughs> <Bob> and do <laughs> me! Alright! Woohoo! Oh, that's a nice one. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Alright! We're gonna find this pit. Real fishing is sponsored by Chevrolet, Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. Hey folks, that's what I call real fishing. Well, rain or shine, we always go out, unless it's a hurricane, of course. Hey, Bob Azumi here, and we're in the state of Vermont, and I've got Sean Good, fisheries biologist, with me. Hi, Bob. Hey, glad you could join me. You're here with the Vermont Fish and Wildlife. That's right. And uh, you've been with the department now for how many years? Ten years. Ten years, but you used to be in Ontario, right? I'm born and raised in Ontario. I'm a Canadian boy. Well, I know you've been working down here in Vermont for a long time. You married a girl down here, started right. a family, you got yep. a little one-year-old. Yeah. But uh, you told me about the early season bass fishing they got going on. Tell me about that. It's really phenomenal in southern part of Lake Champlain particularly. We have a, a legal catch and release season that begins the second week uh, of April, the actual, actually the second Saturday of April, and runs through to the Friday before the second Saturday in June. And you can legally target bass, both smallmouth and largemouth bass, uh, with uh, the caveat that you have to immediately release them as soon as you catch them. It's not bad, it's only about seven, seven and a half hour drive from the greater Toronto area, and we're going to go out there, get wet, and hopefully get slimy with some bass. What do you think? Sounds good to me. That's a good one. All right, Mr. Largemouth. Yes, what we are looking for. That's a respectable fish. Oh, yeah. It's got that straight king crankbait wedged in its mouth. All right, nice. That's, a, that's an average fish for this end of uh, Lake Champlain of Vermont. Right, good stuff. Oh yeah, nice fish. Come on, man. Look at the size of that. That's a nice large one right there. There it is. Insert sailfish jumping. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. A spoof type show where you set the hook and then you insert like a marlin jumping. All right. Good stuff. Ah, nice one. Yeah, he must have followed it in. Finally. <laughs> what do you mean, fish. finally? Finally. Well, you've been stealing all the fish, snaking them from the front of the boat. We've only been fishing for less than a half hour. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think there was a bit of a job in there, but I've been stealing all the fish from the front of the boat. Well, it's about time you let me catch a fish. Boy, I didn't realize you were so bitter, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some sort of wood down there. Here, let me just work the area first. <laughs> what they're hitting this little square bill, shallow running crankbait, 
I think quite a few of the fish we've caught today have bit when we've stopped it. Um, Sean, you know, we'll be cranking it like that and, and then all of a sudden, bang, they'll load up and hit it. And then other times, you know, for the bigger fish, it seems like, you know, just stop it for a second and they may be following it. Oh, yeah, a big black-headed one. <laughs> oh, yeah, hold on, I'll get the net. <laughs> I'll get the net. What are you using? Series one? Yeah, series one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice one. Good fish. That's a great bass right there. Look at that. That series one is all the way down his mouth. It is all over that fish. Yeah, no kidding. That's a chunk right there. Yeah, it sure is. Nice. I think I should have caught it, but still, <laughs> nice bass. <laughs> good that you catch one every now and then, a good one, because I don't want to hear any whining tonight while we're having dinner, okay? I'll try not to. <laughs> that one was, uh, oh, a little bit closer to shore. You know, this is just an amazing fishery. Just so much fun. I'm so glad we made the trip down here. Oh, hey, that's man. That's a beautiful bass. That's a big bass. Yeah, that's a big bass, Bob. <laughs> it's only hooked by the back hook. Uh -oh. You see that? Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> only hooked by the back hook. I'm going to play this with this nice, soft-action Shimano Crucial rod. I'm going to play this one a little different. <laughs> I didn't think it was that big at first. That is a... That's a five-pound plus fish. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Whoa. Now that's a Vermont Southern Champlain largemouth right there for you. Wow. That's what all the tournament boys come down this end of the lake and fish the Vermont side for. Now, how old would a fish like this be? What if you were to guess, uh, Sean? A uh, five pound bass like that in uh, Champlain is about 15, 18 years old, you know, as a, as a range there. 15 to 18 years. You know, we've had a great uh, probably four or five hours of fishing at best. We didn't even hit Sean's good spots. That's going to be tomorrow. What do you mean? We didn't hit your good spot? No, we didn't even come close. We just hit secondary spots? Secondary spots. B, C, or D spots? I call them C spots. C spots. Well, you know what, folks? Early season Vermont Lake Champlain fishing. You can't beat it. Been a lot of fun today, man. Thanks a lot, Bob. It was great. There's more Lake Champlain bass fishing up next. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Lake Champlain has gained a lot of popularity among tournament anglers in the U.S. and for good reason. Consistent catches of big bass are common on this lake. Not to mention some of the other species that also grow to good sizes. People often think of New York when you mention Lake Champlain, but 67% of the lake is owned by Vermont. And the Vermont side is home to some of the best fishing on the lake. The quaint villages provide a nice place to stay while fishing, and there are plenty of places to access the lake. Best of all, there is an early catch and release bass season. While everyone back home in Ontario was only dreaming about catching big bass, I was a short drive from home already out in the water reeling them in. It's, uh, it's mid-May. I'm back here with Sean Good. He's a fisheries biologist with the uh, Vermont Fishing Game. And uh, we're doing a little pre-season bass fishing. I shouldn't say pre-season. It's actually an early season, isn't it, Sean? That's right. It's our uh, early catch and release season that starts uh, the beginning of April and goes through the beginning of June, where you can legally uh, target bass uh, as long as you let them go as soon as you catch one. Well, speaking of targeting, it's... Uh, it's a cool morning. The front has come through, but uh, I'm going to get my rods out. Let's uh, start flinging some shorelines and breaks and see where the fish are. Sounds good. <laughs> You're like drawing water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. <laughs> I, I, 
I, I didn't drive seven and a half hours to watch your rear end pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> there we go. That's a hog, isn't it? Yeah, it feels good. Oh yeah, look at there. Oh, all right. <laughs> good bass. Not a bad fish right there to start the morning. Not bad at all. He was up in that tree, huh? Tight to that tree, yeah. Was he up near the base? Yeah, yeah, right on the base of it. You know, maybe out about a foot. Uh -huh. Oh, good one. Nice one. Big old fish. New York has gotten a lot of publicity over Lake Champlain in the recent years because of the, the big FLW and Bassmasters tournaments that are being held out of Plattsburgh. Uh, the reality is, I'd say probably over 80% of the tournament participants out of those out of those tournaments all run over to the Vermont side of the lake to fish. Hey, wait. Don't want to tell anybody. Oh, you're one of those guys, aren't you? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I didn't even see that wire hanging down. Amazing I, high wire. I cast over that wire, and that bass hit it. There we go. <laughs> okay, what is that there? Oh, it's a fishing pole, is it? All right. The catch of the day, folks. Shimano, it's a Shimano, a Sahara. We should look for the angler that was attached <laughs> to it. <laughs> That's a big fish. Oh here. my God! That is a big fish. This is a sweet fish. Good one. Let me just get the net for you. All right. Nice little. Oh yeah! Oh man! That is a hog. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that thing! <laughs> yeah! All right, brother. On that straight king crankbait, <laughs> he just slammed it. That's what uh, Vermont bass fishing in the springtime is all about, right all there. All right, what a hog! What a healthy-looking fish! That too. is a nice five-pound largemouth. Yeah, good stuff. All right, well, way to go, my man. All right, thank yeah, you. Good that stuff. Was a good fish. I got a small mouth. Whoa, oh, oh, it's a big one. Good stuff. There we go. I knew I'd get one sooner or later. He come off that log. <laughs> now the power of the flipping stick is look at that. Is I can just pull him over here and then lift him in. <laughs> It's a good oh, one. Okay. I got my fish on my my Strike King Pro model jig and I got a gulp winged bat trailer on there. Look at that. Mm, smells good. Alright. Oh yeah. That's, oh, that's a big a, fish. It's a good one too. That's a big fish. That's a big small mo oh baby. I'm just hitting the free spool. Oh, oh wow, that's a big large mouth. That is a big that's large That's a big mouth. large mouth. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Bring his head around. Oh, yeah, hold on. He, he for some want... reason, really likes the bottom of that boat. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh Bob. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> Ooh, a little Series 3 crankbait. Okay, what a bass. What a fatty, huh? Definitely a healthy Vermont bass. Yes, sir. There's lots of shocking action coming up next. Catfish. All right. <laughs> Big job, fish. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View. Sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. It's pretty much common knowledge that every lake and river has at least one glory hole attached to it. Places where game fish are found consistently and in numbers. Understandably, most are well documented and heavily fished. Some reach the status of local legend. Because fish are predictable in behavior, they're relatively easy to find. Smallmouth bass, on the other hand, can fool you. 
Due to the stereotyped image of smallmouth and rocks, most anglers head there. The same is true of shoreline features like fallen trees. In both cases, be prepared to deal with pressured fish. Virtually bypassed by anglers, some of the very best smallmouth structure is weed beds. Cabbage, coontail, and pencil reed, indeed any type, will draw and hold fish. The outer edge is a good starting point, but it's mostly one here and one there. To find concentrations of fish, you have to expand your search and dig deeper. In large weed beds, look for open pockets. Then spot cast to these from a distance. A jig in soft plastic is ideal for the purpose, but remember to make repeated presentations to effect a proper survey. Plastic worms and suspending crankbaits will also do the job. Not all weed pockets will hold fish, but when you find the right one, you'll have a smallmouth bonanza all to yourself. Okay, I've never done this type of fishing ever, and I've been in this business a long time. We're talking electroshocking with a boat here that the government of Vermont owns. Yeah, this is a, one of our research vessels. It's, a, it's an 18-foot electrofishing boat. It's uh, basically set up to put a current of electricity into the water. We use it in, in lakes and ponds and larger river systems to temporarily stun and shock the fish. And the fish are drawn involuntarily towards the positive charge, and when they get close, Closer to the center of the field, they get knocked out basically and rendered unconscious. And uh, we'll be up front, or you'll be up front with the dip net, uh, dip netting these bass into the boat. So we're talking about uh, a type of fish, and I think I can handle this morning. Let's go out and see what happens. All right, sounds good. I want to see if there's any fish here at Champlain. <laughs> I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yesterday, Sean and I caught a number of good-sized bass and one big pike here in that 10 to 12 pound range on this exact shoreline. So today we're going to see what's here with the electroshocking boat. All right, let's go. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Catfish. All right. Big catfish. Oh, oh look There's at that bass. Up. <laughs> Smallmouth. All right, this is what I call real fishing here. <laughs> they come up, they look, they look dead. Yeah, they're stunned. They're paralyzed by the electricity. If you watch them in a tank, they recover fairly quickly. There you go. <laughs> I got two there. This is my type of fishing. Perfect. Well, we got a nice little mix there of smallmouth and perch and... Yeah, yeah, we'll have a look at what we have and uh, then we'll put these back and we'll head to another spot that uh, I want to survey. Oh, sounds great. Can't catch him when he's fishing, but you've got to resort to electricity. He's a bitter man. <laughs> Cheap head. No? Yep. Nice one. A nice molly. Okay, there we go. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, both head. This tells you what what all is in here. I mean, look at the size of this uh, bowfin, or commonly called back home dogfish. Dogfish, yeah. Now, the bowfin can be pretty old too, can't they? They're very long-lived fish, and I know you want to ask me how old this is, but we don't really have enough aging data for me to answer that accurately. There's more electroshocking up next. Can you hear him croaking? The old sheep's head. I thought that was you. <laughs> This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman. When you put on as many miles as I do in any given year, I'll tell you, you sure notice a lot of things. And one thing I do notice is there are a lot of accidents on our highways today. And, well, I don't know. It could be your own fault. It could be the people around you. But for whatever reason, there are a lot of tragedies on our roadways. And what I would recommend when you're trailering, like I do, is to 
keep an eye way ahead of you. Another thing too is when you've got that long, say 25 feet of trailer behind you, you've got to make wide turns. Sure, it's going to follow your truck, but it's not going to follow in the exact footprint of your tires from your tow vehicle when you take a turn. So make sure you turn wide. Give yourself at least 50% more of a turning radius when you've got a trailer behind you. Anyway, folks, happy trailering and remember, keep your eyes open, make sure your mirrors are adjusted properly, and always watch out for the other guy. Well, we do our, our bass uh, surveys on an annual basis, and, and we do them on lakes all over the state, including Lake Champlain. What it really is, is it, uh, it's an index survey. It gives us an index of the population size, the population health, and we can look at the trends and see whether you know, uh, it's a healthy population based on lots of numbers of good quality fish as well as lots of small young fish being produced annually. All right, here we go. I'm on the real good side now, though. I like my odds over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we are. <laughs> so is that as much fun as catching it on a crankbait or no? No, I prefer real fishing. <laughs> Look at him getting his net out there. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was almost as much fun as catching one with a rod and reel, almost. Well that was a, a pretty good haul, we got a couple of really big bass in there. Yeah, let's have a look at them. Yeah. Alright, that is a big bass. Oh, just shy of 20. He's probably going to go 4 or 12. And that's a five. Okay, put that one back in here for a second. Look at this one. I think this one's bigger. Oh, that's a that's a nice fish. Okay. Yep. It's longer. Oh yeah. Five twelve. Just twenty inches. Just over twenty inches, and the weight. Oh <laughs> just yeah. Over six. All right. Wow. Let's have a look at these two largemouth here, Bob. So you got a five and a six? A five and a six. <laughs> you know, that's what's really great. Now, of course, we're out here cheating today with the electric fishing boat doing a bass survey, but you come to Vermont, fish Lake Champlain in the spring, and this is what you're going to get. All right. What a trip. I'm telling you, that electroshocking sure is an easy way of putting fish in the boat. But I prefer a rod and reel. And did we ever have a great couple of days of bass fishing in Vermont on Lake Champlain? Hey, I'll see you next week right here for some more real fishing. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what uh, Vermont bass fishing in the springtime is all about right there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big fish. That is a fish of a lifetime. Whoa! <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah! Wow! Oh, man. <laughs> Woo that was too cool. Oh, man, what a fish. Look at that. <laughs> yes! <laughs>